Good morning, beautiful people. We are just behind the sunrise this morning. We're gonna go to my friend's uh, pond that is loaded with crappie and hopefully we can get some crappie to take home, bake up, freeze up, save for a later date. Uh, either way, today is crappie day. I will try to get a little more tutorial-like in my video to show you guys how you can go to your local ponds and land on these crappie just as well as we do. So without further ado, let's go. Woo. Let's see, today, let's go with these little green and black, chartreuse and black jig heads. We're gonna try it with no spoons today just to see what happens. We can always change it up. That's gonna be the key with crappie guys. You wanna change it up. If something's not working and you know they're here, which frequently ponds in the south, they're gonna be here. Change it up, change colors, change jig head colors, change swim baits, all that good stuff. So we're going to start with these for now and see what happens. And as you guys have seen me do in previous videos, if you've watched my channel at all, I like to tie on doubles when it comes to crappie. And that is not because I want to catch two fish necessarily, even though two fish would be awesome. It is because that's the presentation I prefer. A lot of time, bait fish swim in schools, right? So I like to present as a school versus just a single jig head. Uh, it's kind of rare you're going to see bait fish swimming alone. Usually they swim in little packs. So that's the presentation I prefer, and that's what has given me luck in the past. So we're, we're going to swim two little jig heads together here today. And you gotta forgive me here, my hands are dry as Gandhi's flip-flop. And that is because I've spent a lot of time out in the sun and messing with these fish. And it just makes my hands burn and peel and all that good stuff. But it comes with the territory. Alright, we're ready to rock and roll. I can almost guarantee that I'm going to break off at some point today and we'll end up trying a different colored jig head, but... We're gonna go with the green and black to start it off, a little swimming school. And today my color of choice is gonna be these little blue-green crappy, crappy swim jig deals. I'm sure there's a better name for them, a proper name for them that I don't know. I call it like I see it, you know? So whenever you're hooking these belly out, and I like these jig heads because they have a little notch on them that kind of holds the little rubber in place right there and right over that notch and there we have a little bait fish probably could have hooked that better to where it was swimming more upright but it doesn't matter crappie are still going to eat it you can always tip these things with little crappie bites which i do have in my bag but they're kind of a pain because they come off constantly and you have to re put them back on there and it's just it's tedious and i usually catch fish with or without them so we're going to try without them at but first, if I'm not having any luck, we'll start adding some crappie bites. We'll start changing colors, all that good stuff. So that looks like a delicious little bait fish to me. How about you guys? And then, of course, two of them because we're swimming in schools today. So hopefully we can land on some slab, slab crappie with these. Now, we call them Sakale down here in Louisiana. That's what the, the Cajuns decided to name them back in the day. And Sakale means sack of milk. For whatever reason, they compared, the, I guess, the, the texture and the taste of crappie to a sack of milk, which I don't really see. It is delicious, but I don't, I don't know if I'd compare it to a sack of milk here. So we got our bag. Let's grab our ice chest. Let's go get some crappie, guys. And as always, I'd like to take our first cast off of this little deck here. Don't know if I've ever gotten one off the first cast here, but we're going to give it a shot. With these crappie jigs, especially swimming doubles, you're gonna to wanna to cast it out and you're going to wanna let it sink for about one or two seconds and then just start swimming it towards you. You don't wanna let it sink all the way to the bottom because usually crappie suspend themselves in the water. They do suspend at different, different levels and if there is structure at the bottom, perhaps they might be towards the bottom. 
but for the most part you're going to find them suspended in the water and you'll usually get that little hit on the drop when you're letting it sink within the first one to three seconds i'd say or when you're swimming it back to you after it sinks so we're going to let it sink that's about three seconds there we'll just start swimming it back to us and you'll change up your speed fast or slow try different things until it works with crappie and ponds you always always want to basically walk around the entire pond you're going to cast towards the middle reel it to you try it a couple times in one spot if nothing happens there move about 10 feet 15 feet cast again towards the middle same thing let it drop reel towards you nothing there move to the next spot about 10 10 feet 15 feet down maybe less even five feet and basically just keep doing that and repeating until you land on the crappie once you land on the crappie chances are you've landed on a school of them you can keep casting to the same spot and keep catching them in the same spot so nothing so far here we've tried that way we've tried that way we've tried this way nothing so far might change my retrieve a little bit slow down jig the pole a little bit kind of entice them and see what happens here all right guys so there was nothing over there so we're going to do exactly what i said we should do and that's move i am going to the spot in this pond where we've had luck catching the slabs before so we'll try it here if i don't have luck on this color i'll change colors and again moving five to ten feet to the left and to the right trying different spots until i land on these crappies home a lot of times they'll be bunched up in structure like this you see these sticks coming out the the water it is a little bit shallow for the crappie. Usually they're gonna be a bit deeper. So I don't know. We'll try different things out until we land on them, but we're definitely gonna land on them. So no worries. And here we are at Slab City. So let's see if we can have any luck over here. We are gonna try some crappie bites today. And that is because I've gotten Quite a few bites so far, but nothing actually committing to it. So I'm wondering if a little scent will help them commit to it. Uh, in crappie bites, you can buy them from pretty much anywhere. And you just tip, tip your hook with them. And it adds scent. And it does work on these fish. So hopefully we can get a couple of these fish to actually commit and take it instead of just nibble on it. Because I can definitely feel them nibbling. Now the fishing forecast does ramp up around... 12 to 1 o'clock today and it's only about 8 o'clock in the morning right now so we could be a little ahead of ourselves but you can still catch fish even when the, the fishing forecast is not ramped up so we're gonna get something here stay tuned stay tuned all right guys we have had no luck on the blue green so we're gonna clip these off and we're gonna tie on something that I did have luck with at this pond and that is the little orange jig head with the spoon on it and then we're gonna do a white at the bottom white's a little heavier so it'll almost be like a drop shot it'll help us gauge the the depth and what water part of the water column these fish are at so we're gonna tie these up real quick and we're gonna try out one white with one tail another white with a swim tail and we'll see which one they like better and based on that, we'll determine the rest of our day. All right, guys. And there you have it. We got orange up top. We'll straighten him out and get that knot to where he swims the right way. There we go. And we got the white with the swim tail at the bottom. That looks like a slab master right there. Let's see if we can get on some slabs with him. All right, guys. And not even a bite on the whites. So we're going to go with what worked previously in this pond, which is chartreuse. And we will put another little blue-green one on as well. Finally, little crappie guys. <laughs> Took a little break to gather my thoughts here because we fished for a couple hours, looked at the fishing forecast. It's very low right now. 
not a lot going on but we landed a dinker i wonder if he's got some bigger family out here so we'll go ahead and let him go take another cast see if we can get papa papa crappy thanks buddy There is Papa Crappy that we want. Finally. Finally, finally, finally. Look at the size of that crappy guys. Let's go weigh this dude up. That's a big crappy. That's a big beautiful crappy. Boy did we need it. We've been fishing for a while. It's about 10:30 now. Took a little break said a couple prayers and the prayers have been answered that's a big boy he's gonna eat up nicely man that's a big crappie those colors beautiful fish he's going to bake up beautifully so that's it guys finally got him on the blue the blue and green Moved all around this pond, finally found a spot I was getting a couple bites, stayed on it, and finally nailed it. I want to give this guy away. Let's see what he weighs. On the orange jig with the spoon head. One point three four pounds, guys. That's gonna be some good eating right there. Now he's either a hybrid or a black. I can't really tell. If you know, let me know in the comments. I know this pond was stocked with white, white crappie, but we've caught a couple darker ones. I'd say he's definitely black or a hybrid. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Look at those colors. There's another one. Is that a bass or a crappie? That's another slabby. Finally got him to bite, guys. And that's for sure a white right here. Might have landed on a little school. On the blue and green again. Look at that beautiful fish, guys. Finally. Finally, 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 we've landed on them or they've started to bite, one of the two. One of the two, but moved all around this pond, we finally found our spot, so I'm gonna go drop him in the ice chest, give him away, and move right back over here because this is where they are apparently. Look at that beautiful, beautiful fish, look at those colors. Gotta be another pound and a half or that's a certified slab right there. All right, starting to lose hope, kept going, and we got him. I will say, I started to fish it a little bit slower. Real pause, jig, real pause, jig. And they're seeming to take it when it drops. But when I slow down on it and I kind of stop it, that's when they've taken it. So always got to change it up, see what works. I think we finally landed on the magic sauce and what works here. Woo, stoked. I'm gonna have some good dinner tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Look at the colors in the sunlight, just beautiful. Beautiful. One point five two. That is a pound and a half crappie, guys. That is a certified slab right there, and he is going to eat up deliciously. We're gonna bake him with that amazing recipe our buddy showed us that you saw in the bass episode. But pound and a half crappie, certified slab. We're gonna eat him up. Cannot wait to taste you, sir. What a beautiful fish. Thank you for biting. Thank you for your life. It's 
swallowed that thing, huh, bud? Guys, I would always recommend a pair of needle nose pliers or some surgical little deals like this just to get a hook that's in there a little deep. It's not too deep. He's not gut hooked. He'll live. We just got to get it out. So keep that in mind. And there it is. Just like that. I'm glad I had those pliers. We didn't want to have to keep a little, little dinky do like this. Go tell your pops. We need more of your pops and your uncles and your aunties. Go get them. Go tell them. Go tell them. Hey guys, so no more bites in this little corner where the two slabs came from. So we're gonna move it. We're gonna go over to that dock over there. Try again from over there. Give these fish a rest where we know they are in their little structure here. And we might come back a little later. Then we'll try again over in what I call Slab City over there, which is where we've previously caught the slabs. So this is actually a new slab spot for us on this side, but that's what it's all about. You got to move around the pond, try different spots. Uh, these fish are going to hang out in structure where they're comfortable. Most of the slabs that I've caught in this pond have actually been surprisingly close to the bank, but I'm guessing that's just because where the structure is, where these branches fall from these trees into the water, create little habitats for these fish to kind of nest in and have their babies and live their little crappy lives until we come along and catch them to eat them. So the circle of life, guys, circle of life. Let's keep it moving. There's a big old water moccasin right there, guys. Very venomous snake and exactly why I should not be wearing sandals, but I am. Let me get you a better shot with my phone. Big old nasty guy looking right at me. Got us a little bass wrapped up in this tree and these weeds. Come on, buddy. There we go. It's a good bass. It's a very nice bass. Barely hooked them, too. Look at that pretty guy. He's been in a fight with something. Look at the top of him right there. Let's give him away. Pound and a half, pound 0 0.75, I'd say. But as you guys know, if you've been watching my videos, bass will also bite crappie bait. There he is. 1.91. Healthy little bass. We'll let him get on with his bass life and live with his water moccasin friend that was right next to him. Look at you, healthy fish. Might have just nested. Tail's a little messed up. Might have been on bed right here. We'll let her go. Be free, big girl. Big enough girl. There we go. All right, gang, and we are going to retie. The bottom jig just broke off, plus I've caught a couple fish on this. That bass, he had a little more teeth than the crappie and he probably frayed this line a little bit by the knot. So we're just gonna retie to be safe. That way we don't lose any fish. It's been a good day so far. Two pound and a half crappie is more than enough to eat. Though we wouldn't mind getting some for our freezer. We'll keep going for a little while here, but if we have to call it it too, I'm okay with that. These water moccasins, I've seen two so far. One was swimming, I casted right on top of them by accident. Freaked me out a little bit. I do not like the snakes. So, hopefully we don't get bit today. I am wearing sandals. Probably not the brightest move in the book, but we'll retie. We'll put a couple more little jigs on here, little swim jigs. The blue and green seem to be working, so we'll probably end up sticking with those. And actually, I'm going to roll with the one jig this time because I'm tired of fighting with these lulies. We've circled the pond a couple more times so far and just nothing, no bites. So we're not going to push our luck today. We're going to be happy with our two pound and a half crappie. Ask any crappie fisherman if he'd be happy or unhappy with two pound and a half crappie. So we'll definitely take it. We'll get home and cook those up. 
This here was the magic sauce today, the blue and green little jig deal and the orange jig head with the spoon on it. So swam it, tried it different retrieves, uh, slow retrieve with a little bit of jigging, pausing, things like that. That's what got these two slabs right here. We got a couple little dinkers as well, but we're not worried about the dinks. We want their, their fathers and their mothers, as horrible as that sounds. But uh, still a great day fishing, always a good day being out. Super beautiful out here, just relaxing on a bench in the shade now, soaking it all in. So we're gonna go ahead and load these crappie up, take what we got today, take what we were blessed with, get home, cook them up, and enjoy them for dinner. So see you there. Because this is a crappie madness video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some footage of the past two days off work, which was a Sunday and a Wednesday, I believe, where I was at Adam's Pond and we were crappie hunting. Still a great day being outside, off the couch, off of work, fishing, hanging out in nature, catching my own dinner. Feels great, you guys can do this too. Get out to those ponds, get your fishing poles, nothing crazy, you saw what I used. Some cheap little rigs, my pole's not a million dollars. It's all you need, just get outside, get out there, get fishing, catch your food. Even if you don't catch your food and you just wanna throw them back, still great being outside, enjoying nature. So appreciate those likes, subscribes, and comments. I'll go ahead and roll a little bit of footage of me and Adam crappie fishing before we get to the cook uh, part of it. Dude, that's healthy. That's good eating right there, boys. Let's go, first one of the day, skunk is out the boat. Man. Alright gang, upon arrival to my house, I had this bright idea that I could feed my pet anemone some crappie that we caught today. So we're going to eat some crappie, why can't he? Normally feed those guys uh, shrimp, krill, saltwater fish, things like that, but I don't see any problem at all in feeding him a little bit of freshwater fish. I'm sure he'll enjoy it just as much as saltwater and just as much as us. And hopefully you guys if you try the recipe, so if you do, let me know in the comments. But Here's a few shots of my aquarium before we go feed the anemone some uh, crappie and then we'll get to our dinner of crappie as well. This is my 110 gallon saltwater aquarium. And this is the anemone who's going to be enjoying its first bite of crappie in its entire life. These are my beloved fish. Guys, these fish, a few of them survived Hurricane Ida. So I had an aquarium Back in the day, it was 75 gallons. It had much more coral in it than this. Um, and I tried quite a few different fish than what I've got going on in here right now. But I lost it during Hurricane Ida and the local fish store actually took care of these fish for me. And I rebuilt my aquarium after I rebuilt from Hurricane Ida um, and got my fish back and they are fat and happy. So We've got a gym tang, a sailfin tang, a yellow eye cold tang, a purple tang, uh, a 
yellow mimic tang, my clownfish, and then a cleaner wrasse. That little cleaner wrasse is the same thing you see hanging on the bottom of sharks and turtles and things like that. And they basically clean parasites off my fish. So pretty much a self-sustainable uh, autopilot tank that I have going on right now. Obviously, it could be a lot more beautiful as far as it goes with coral. I could have a lot more coral, and I did have a lot more coral back in the day, but these days I've got it set up to where it's just pretty much on autopilot and easy to maintain. The coral isn't real finicky. It's real easy to take care of coral, so. All right, guys, and here we have on my very rusty tongs a little piece of crappie. We're gonna go ahead and feed it to the anemone, and we'll take a cool time lapse. These guys, he's probably gonna actually take about 10 to 15 minutes to actually swallow this entire piece of crappie. Um, but I'll take a time lapse to speed it up for you guys. So without further ado, let's go ahead and feed our anemone some crappie. how cool that is he just kind of grabs it look the shrimp wants it shrimp wants a piece but the anemone will grab the shrimp and actually eat the shrimp so shrimp better not get too close to the anemone fish are probably freaking out too look he's already starting to swallow it look at that how cool is that guys how cool is that look the shrimp wants wants a piece for himself See the anemone tentacle sticking to the shrimp? The anemone can actually eat that shrimp, grab him, pull him in, and eat him just like he's doing this piece of crappie. So shrimp better keep his distance, otherwise he'll run into some trouble. That shrimp's actually a valuable piece of my aquarium as well. He cleans parasites off my fish too, so we don't need him getting stuck in the anemone as bad as he wants a piece of crappie. Look how cool that is. All right, guys, how cool was that watching the anemone eat his crappie? You may have saw in the time lapse a couple times. I had to fight that shrimp off. Kept trying to steal the crappie from the anemone, so had to put him back in his cave. Don't worry, that shrimp gets plenty to eat. Uh, the anemone's pretty much folded out on himself now, so he's going to digest that piece of crappie and grow big and strong. Now it is our turn to go cook our crappie, the leftovers from what the anemone has had, which should be plenty for us as well. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Thought that would be cool. Thought somebody might enjoy that out there on YouTube. If you did enjoy it, let me know in the comments. And please subscribe if you haven't already for more awesome saltwater aquarium and fishing action. Time to prepare our crappie. One day I'll get some better lighting in here. I apologize. We've got our crappie fillets. We've got two eggs, some butter in a measuring cup, some saltine crackers. Uh, you can use mustard of your choice. We use Dijon around here. Lemon pepper seasoning, red pepper, and if you'd like, we're gonna do some Tony's in this one, so that's up to you, that's your call. This has a little uh, salt in it, so you don't wanna overdo this with the saltine crackers, because that's gonna be our main source of salt. And we cannot forget to dap in the original Vera himself. Love you, Pops. Thanks for cooking with us and hanging out with us once again here at Vera Videos. So guys, first thing we're going to do is preheat our oven to 350 degrees, so that way, by the time our fish is ready, the oven will be ready for the fish. So this is gonna be the same exact recipe I showed you guys before on the bass episode, the previous episode, but we're gonna do it once again. Uh, it should be absolutely freaking delicious. So first step guys is gonna to be to take a brand new empty Ziploc bag. We're gonna dump our saltine crackers into said Ziploc bag. There's a whole pouch. We probably won't use them all, but Better safe than sorry, right? So close that up, try to get the air out. And you're going to smash these saltines to bits. All right, so 
there we have our slightly more than powder fish coating made out of saltine crackers. So we're going to want to empty this Ziploc bag into one of our Tupperwares here. I'm going to do the bigger one because that's the one we're actually going to coat them in. And there we have our saltine cracker coating. All right guys, next step, don't be overly generous with the Dijon mustard, but you want to squeeze a little bit into the other Tupperware that we have here. A little goes a long way. Again, my buddy's words. So just a little bit in there. Now we're going to go ahead and crack our eggs into here. And as soon as my daughter is done clank a lankin' on her bowl and finishing dinner, we can continue this video. You good, girl? There? You done? All right, let's go. All right, so we've got our eggs and mustard here. Now we're going to add some lemon pepper seasoning. That's going to be kind of the main seasoning of this dish, so I like to be pretty generous with it. We're going to dust the fillets a little more after they're coated with it as well. I like to add some red pepper because, as you guys know, if you've watched any of my stuff, I like things spicy. And this time we're going to add a little bit of Tony's. Not too much again because this has salt in it and our saltine crackers have quite a bit of salt. But that should add a little Cajun zest to it because, after all, we are half Cajun. We cannot forget. Alright, so we've got our egg our mustard, our lemon pepper, our red pepper, and a little bit of Tony's here. We're just gonna whisk it all together. All right guys, we've got our egg wash, we've got our breading, and we've got our pan. We're gonna add a little bit of oil to our pan. It is not a non-stick pan, so if you have a non-stick pan, you may not need to. Not too much, just enough to keep these guys from sticking. So that's good. We are now going to dip our fillets into the egg wash into the batter onto the pan we'll dust them with a little bit more lemon pepper we will throw them in the oven that is currently at 260 degrees once it gets to 350 we're going to bake them at 350 for about 30 minutes i like to broil for a minute at the end as well to get an extra little crisp on there so let's go ahead and get started here i will be washing my hands after this as well and i would recommend that you do too before and after so get these fillets nice and egg washed up Man, those were some nice crappie guys. Got some big fillets off these dudes. All right, so we got our egg wash. We're gonna go straight into the breading. See how it just kinda sticks right to it. It's exactly what we want. Get it in there real good. Get it coated real well. All right, one fillet is done. Onto the pan. Look how beautiful that looks. A little crappie mitten, as I like to call them. It's right where you cut the rib cage out. That's kind of why it gives a little mitten shape. Next fillet, it's onto the pan. Alright guys, there you have it. So, beautiful pan filled with dusted crappie with saltine crackers in our egg wash. Last thing we're going to do is wash our hands, come back and dust these with a little bit more lemon pepper seasoning before we put them in at 350 for 30 minutes. We're going to so. take a little bit more lemon pepper seasoning, dust the tops of them. A little or a lot depends on how your taste buds are. And we're going to put them in the oven. 350 degrees for 30 minutes, guys. We're going to set this timer for 30 minutes. And now we wait. Should be delicious now. It has been 30 minutes with the crappie, so we're going to turn off the bake. We're going to turn on the broil, 525, set that timer. We'll go two minutes, but I'll still check them at one minute because I don't want them to burn. Right, guys, Let's take two minutes on broil is finished. Let's go ahead and get these guys out of here. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful fillets. Look at that, guys. About to be delicious. 
Guys, I wish you could smell this magical crappie. It smells amazing, that lemon pepper really sets it off. We got a hungry dog back here. Huh. Guys, look how beautiful and flaky that crappie is. Breaking apart on me already. Look at that, just flakes right apart. Absolutely gonna be delicious. Let's go. All right guys, and we have made it to my favorite part of the day, which is the eat. Check out this crappie. I showed it to you breaking apart with that little close up there, but oh my God, is it delicious. There's one extra step that you can take with this crappie that I did take in the previous episode that I did not take in this one, which is to melt down some butter, pour it over those fillets when there's about five minutes left on the bake portion. Uh, it does add, as you can imagine, some deliciousness, but my arteries are probably already screwed, so we didn't, we didn't do the butter this time. But gonna be absolutely delicious. We've got our crappie fillets, a little bit of tartar sauce, I'm not going to spend an hour on the eating portion of this video. We already had a lot of action going on, so I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned a thing or two. Right. And let's try this crap, you guys. First bite. Dude, this recipe is the bomb. I don't think I'll be using anything else on my freshwater fish besides this bake recipe. Used it in the last episode on the bass. Use it on this episode with the crappie. It definitely, it, it was made for crappie, this recipe. Oh my God. That's so freaking amazing, guys. You've got to try this recipe. Please let me know if you do. After a long day of fishing and catching these guys, they were just swimming in a pond about three hours ago. Now we're eating them. And our anemone had some too. Don't quite understand why the Cajuns named it Sakale, sack of milk. I guess they love their milk too. I do love some milk, but this is better than milk, let's be honest. Sack of bomb is what this should be called. Sack of fire. Sack of fire. I don't know how to say fire in French. Those pound and a half or crappie really were the perfect size or maybe it's just because I'm a big man, but some great size fillets. Crappie is so delicious, guys. <clears throat> I promise you, there's crappie in your local ponds. At least if you're in the south, maybe not up north. I'm not a biologist here. Guys, we're on the way to 200 freaking subscribers and just a month ago, I remember on the first crappie catch and cook, I had 18 subscribers, so huge shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad that you're enjoying the content. I'm really enjoying producing it for you, filming it, editing it, putting it all together, enjoying these awesome new recipes. This is what life's about. Again, no better feeling than going out, catching your own food, coming home, cooking it up, eating it up with a bomb new recipe. Again, shout out to Adam for this amazing recipe. Let's go. All right guys, episode five is already in the books of Vera Video's Catch and Cook. Can't believe it. It's only been about a month and we've already got five Catch and Cooks on the tube. So, hope you guys are enjoying. Hope you took a thing or two from the crappie fishing today and the recipe. Hope you got inspired to start your own saltwater aquarium. Could give you plenty of information on that too. So, if you have anything to say, if you have any comments, leave them down below. I'll be happy to speak to you there. Uh, if you have any suggestions for any future episodes, any certain type of fish or recipes or anything like that you want me to try, please let me know. I'll be happy to try them out. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I had an awesome day. Loved that crappie recipe. I hope you try it too. Y'all take it easy. I'm going to catch you on episode six. Peace.